United States of America is the most successful nation the world has ever known. And I think that's largely because we're the freest nation. Humans cannot reach their potential, cannot realize their dreams unless they're free. If prosperity were easy, everybody around the world would be prosperous. If freedom were easy, everybody around the world would be free. If security were easy, everybody around the world would be secure. They are not. None of this is going to be easy. But this is the United States of America. It takes an extraordinary effort. It takes extraordinary commitment. It takes extraordinary strength. The Valley Forge wasn't easy. Going to the moon wasn't easy. Settling the West wasn't easy. We are the American people. We have seen difficulties before, and we always overcome them. This is about rolling up our sleeves. I mean, we might have some differences, but at Americans putting our head down and getting it done. Welcome, my friends. Let me introduce my family, Godfather Conservative Radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Hello, everybody. It's glad to be here on this beautiful Tuesday morning, afternoon, whatever. And my younger brother, Mr. J.R. Robinson. What's up, hey, hey, hey. Happy Taco Tuesday, everybody. Da, 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 da. Hey, do us a favor, too. Give us a share on the show because the suppression is real today. Oh, damn. Yeah, it is. Oh. You need a chair? We need a chair. You need a chair? Oh, yeah. Well, you put on your new shoes and maybe you get a chair, huh? I, I get the chair. Yeah, just I put on the new shoes. <laughs> Give us a call, ladies and gentlemen. Single, 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 ocho, single, ocho, single. <laughs> Donde es la baño? Donde es la baño? It's all my Spanish for today, folks. Yeah, I live in El Segundo. Listen, um, Menudo. we are we are live. It's a lot of stuff to talk about in a short time to do it. We only broadcast here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 12 to 1.30 p.m. We hope that you... Like, like Jake said, we hope that you um, do share. Yes, there's a whole lot of suppression that's going on, and and they're going to be ramping up. We're going to be ramping up oh, over yeah. the next election year. So um, you might see us now. And here's here's the crazy part. Some people say to me, I, I didn't know you were still broadcasting. Yeah, we're still broadcasting. We broadcast. We, we've been broadcasting for the last 12 years. Thing is, if y'all don't see it, if y'all don't go looking for it, y'all won't know about it. That's the issue. And we really need y'all to sort of like share. Because when you share, you might see us for a week or so. But if you don't continue sharing, then after that week is over, you might not see us again. So that that's that's how they want to play the game. Real quick, your boy is your boy wants to testify. Hunter Biden wants to testify. He wants um, to testify. He's so arrogant, man. These freaking people. Hunter Biden is willing to speak to Congress. He's my, willing. Uh, my, my thing about that, thumbs up. Thumbs <laughs> <laughs> up. It's like, wait a minute. You want to go before Congress. And you know that you're going to get yelled at and and blasted in front of the American people. Well, in front of the people that watch it. You know why? Inside you, you already know why. Yep. Because at the end of the hearings, it's the end of the story. 
That's the right. end of the story. That's yep. what we've been doing for 20 freaking years. <laughs> well, and this yep. is a great play for him because yep. the Biden side's been withholding a ton of evidence. There's 17,000 emails that went to burner accounts when Joe was vice president they won't release. There's a bunch of bank records they don't have. So he wants to get, that's why he wants to get in front of Congress before they have a chance to get all that. When they depose him, which is what they're asking for, they get to ask him questions and, and get answers on the record so that as they continue to get the documentation. I, I got a question, though. Mm -hmm. Who cares about the record, man? What? <laughs> the record is there, and these people are all still free. I'm so right. sick of this, man. I, and, and President Trump can't even get his own evidence right, in the court. You know, this is so backwards that, you know, you almost want to quit playing this game. I do. I mean, Hunter well, I Biden said, is willing. I said it already. I, I said it already. If this thing don't come down next year, I'm done. I'm serious. I'm well, done. The most important thing, Wayne, that I've been meaning to ask you is when you deep fry the turkey, right, <laughs> do, you, do, do you carve the meat off? Of the carcass and put it on a platter, or or because I know you can't have stuffing. It's in hard. Like it's it. hard. It's hard, man. Because once you carve that little first piece to taste it, you are picking oh. that thing all the way to the carcass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean because it's so juicy and flavorful, you are picking that thing all the way to the carcass. But can you like, do it? Can you do it? Like I like to cut my breasts yes. off. Yes. I'm like a, I'm like a tranny. I like, like to a cut tranny, my right? Off. And line them up and then take the, the legs. You can off. do it. <laughs> okay. That's what and the for the most part. On it. For the most part, that's what we do. Okay. That's what I do. I, I yeah. Just wanted to check because the Republicans. Yeah. Does that mean, I just wanted to check, you know, the Republicans and, and, and whatnot. Does yeah. that mean January 2025, if Trump doesn't win, we, we just go cooking show and we're just yeah. talking cooking and food. No, that's it. That's not Fish, it. Fishing or something, fishing or, you know, oh, yeah. fishing, fishing. I'm in. Fishing tips. Hey, you know what, too? I was thinking we could just turn it into a music channel and uh, just <laughs> just play oldies and crap, you know, and just talk about how America used to be, you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Back in my day when I walked uphill to school both ways. It was I used to have this thing, this freedom of the press. It was so awesome. I mean, it, yeah, exactly. It Back yeah. before the America was just a slave state, never did anything good. That's right. right. It used to be melting pot, and then it really melted, and, yeah. and they just, they just. Uh, now it's no, America yeah, stand. I was thinking about that. I was like, you probably got into a room at Camp David, and you're like, House of Cards. Listen, you're gonna have to oh, go, yeah. and you're gonna have to sit in front of Congress, and you're gonna have to take it for the family. For the family, you're gonna, Hunter. You're gonna have to take it. But believe me, when everything is over, then we will come back to Camp David, and we have a party and everything. But just act like. You're taking major fire, just and then they and, fire. and then they fade out, and they show just Joe and Jill saying, "I wish we didn't have to shoot them." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Jill. Jill's like, well, actually, no, I, I don't know because Jill and Jill and Hunter don't get along, but Joe, but Jill, but Joe's probably like, "Is there something else we can do? We have to be able to do something else." But uh, I mean, either way, when I saw that, I was like, "Yeah, this, that's, that's, that's." You just don't volunteer. There's so many things like that going on right now, too. Like this Hillary, guy, the last, guy, whoa, whoa, whoa. um, the last person that volunteered like that was Hillary, right? And nothing happened after. I what? What she sat even, there. I don't even remember it. Oh, you mean I, the Benghazi one? That that uh, twelve or thirteen hour one that she didn't even get up to go pee. I don't, yeah, I don't in, her, in her her Islamic green dress. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. Trey Gowdy's biggest day, and nothing happened. They nope. sat there, and it was one sided, lopsided. And that's another thing tough. too. It was lopsided like that. America tunes out. Polit politicals tune in. America tunes out. Yep. Now I'm. America tuned in to um, uh, Clarence Thomas because it was weird to see that type of deal. Plus, they did in prime time, but that but that was also lopsided. But it was Supreme Court justice, you know, it, like that. But for the most part, if it's lopsided, if it's one party against, and America tunes out. 
But, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Well, and like I say, the committee, you know, they you always depose witnesses before a hearing like that. That's just standard operating practice, you know. I, I, I did tweet that out. I was like, oh, they're going to talk to him in private before the public. Oh, yeah. Well, that's all, no it's all a big game. I mean, if you yep. still think that there's two parties, you're 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 falling behind, folks. I said that yesterday. I said that yesterday. This I was whole like, you know thing, what? everything that both sides of the aisle, short a couple people. There are a couple people, and I'm still trying to figure out if they're plants, like <laughs> Matt Gates and them. I'm still trying to figure out if they're really on the team and they're just yeah. playing their role, or if they're serious. Yeah. You know, because you get people like Chip Roy, and they just blow the whole thing up. Man, but, Chip, man, Chip. Chip, man, you know, and I, I can't know, tell if he's just so did I, or if and, he's corrupt. No, they're corrupt. This is all about protecting the government. That's all this is about. You right. can tell with the responses from mega people in Congress after J six. That's mm -hmm. how you can tell that this whole game is about protecting the game. It's just like on the street, man. Yep. They can't. They can't take down their 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 uh their money revenue it's exactly they can't right. do it no. they can't do it now they can play with it but they can't take it down and so and you know what happens so, when they try ask jfk yeah. right yeah 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 or donald yeah, j and, trump for that matter and it's like this oh oh y'all didn't get the message when we took down jfk pop, pop. king pop, pop. Malcolm X, pop, pop. Kennedy Part Two. You know, it's like it's all the like black the Panther, all the Black Panther leadership, um, the the whole nine yards, man. Anybody who worked for the Clintons, yeah. Hey, there's a plane going down the. I I don't know what's happening in Georgia, but there's a plane going down. I was like, hmm. A big Mike's even going. How about that? At first, at first, I was gonna say. <laughs> at first, I was gonna tweet. Um, uh, uh, man, what's it going to treat? Uh, what's it going to treat? Light him up! But I was like, no, man. <laughs> There's some things you can't say, man. I know. I was like, no, somebody's going to take it wrong. I'm still I'm banned from Twitter over that. I mean, there's some things you just can't say. I'm going to be suspended on all the platforms. <laughs> and they'll never let you back. And even Elon wouldn't let me back. You know, Elon's I, like, I'm on to you. I figured it out, man. I I'm like, Marco Rubio came. Marco Rubio was the chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee at the time, or mm -hmm. he, maybe he was temporary, whatever. And he came out with a statement that said the Russians colluded in the 2016 elections. And Senator Grassley asked Marco Rubio, please provide us the evidence that made you make that statement. And Marco Rubio said, no. And I said, Marco Rubio, something ought to occur yeah 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 and, and then boom, i was gone i was like where did hutch go <laughs> where'd you go man? hutch is gone so, well they got me <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna go watch some youtube nope no i'm not <laughs> yeah i know right yeah yeah hutch is calling his wife hey honey can i get your youtube login no, i know I right? Watch, right i don't want to watch that stuff so since, <laughs> that she watches. Since I, um, since I couldn't say light them up, I did say um, uh, the crazies are coming. The crazies are coming. Oh so yeah. I don't. I don't know why they're going down to Georgia, except for maybe somebody told them, "Hey, uh, maybe a possibility we might have some issues with uh, Georgia in 2024." Just remember, this is all headquartered in Georgia. Yeah, oh, yeah. All the anti-Trump stuff is all headquartered by the Rhino Governors, Florida. I mean Georgia. Kemp, speaking Kemp, of, whatever his name is. Speaking of Georgia, if you haven't watched this show for a while, a long time ago, I told or I said, "Beware of um, Nikki Haley." A long time ago, and this was before um, um, Hutch Part Two, and this was way before Jay Robinson. This was during the Trump administration. And I was like, man, she looked like she's on a fast track for the White House. I, I mean, the way I mean, because she's already been a governor. Look at all the boxes she checks. 
she checks a lot of boxes. And I, I mean, I'm like, he just might. I mean, now I know Tulsi can't. Tulsi will be great too. Well, actually, that's what we thought back then. But um, I was like, man, Nikki Haley. Never if she her. ran against somebody on the Democrat side back then, this was back mm. then though. Before we knew anything, I was like, yeah, she, she could beat them if she ran. And then Trump made her ambassador to the U. And I was like, well, God darn. Now, now she's gonna pick up relationships with other countries and stuff like that, you know. And I was like, oh man, okay. Well, maybe, maybe he'll get rid of Pence. And make her a vice president. Now, again, this was before 2020 in January. And I was just throwing it out there and everybody, no, no. I said, okay, well, I don't know. I I just, it's just weird. I mean, she's, she's getting strong up there. Uh, The Koch brothers just came out this morning. Just get ready to tell you that. I was just getting ready to yeah, that's it, like, okay. it tells you more. It tells you more about the Koch brothers than anything else. I mean, it does. It does. It does. They they buried us. They're the ones that had us where we are. Yeah, we used to go to their little conferences too. Yep. AFP, Americans for Prosperity. I got it's all in the name, Koch. people. I got it's all I in the called, name. I got called a Coke sucker <laughs> 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 by a big giant inflatable rat <laughs> <laughs> during the bomb threat. <laughs> remember that Jason. college remember that college girl we were interviewing she had yep, that white yep. stuff on her mouth on the corner this is the most disgusting thing I ever see I hate that when people had that little white stuff on the corner of their lips Jason Hutch Hutch, Hutch used to be a little fire starter back in his younger days <laughs> used to be oh my god <laughs> He's getting us news oh, guard fact check on a podcast. <laughs> like that's above the rim shit. There, he, he he used to be a little fire starter back then, boy. He was like, "No, let him talk, let him talk." I, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 here it comes, here it comes. Go get him, Hutch. Go get him, Hutch. This woman so, came out there and was compl- college graduate, four years, complaining that she couldn't get a job and it was my fault. No, oh, Jesus. I'm like, I'm like, hold on, hold on, sweetheart. <laughs> what was your major? Right. And it was like liberal basket weaving. Liberal, or yeah, liberal studies or something. Yep. You you obviously <laughs> got failed by your parents. Right. Yep. yep. I really thought yep. basket weaving, there was a big market for it. <laughs> it was like, seriously, you're out here on a picket line or what are you doing here? Oh man, that was funny. That 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 freaking instant, instant protest, and then it was gone right after lunch break was over. It was great. Ugh. How many um how many years was she governor of South Carolina? Just I don't know. I think probably the max six or four. I don't know. To be honest with you, I can look it up. Somebody in the audience is from South Carolina. Let us know in the chat. The reason why the reason why I'm asking is because with experience and stuff, she's way past the Santas. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's definitely past the Santas. She yeah she's. She's past the same, and plus she's been on the world stage already. He hasn't. But so, you know, she tries to make the case to to conservatives. Give me a break, man. She changed the North South Carolina flag, right? You know, over, yes, over, liberal, over liberal BS, which will pull in a couple of people. It'll it'll take out a couple of people too, though. It will, but where history is like, not history is not something you can pick and choose, man. No, 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 it's not. But where Trump won in 2016. He lost some people, but he but he picked up people. He picked up a lot of people. You remember? Uh, Make America Great Again. Join us. What do you have to lose? He yeah. lost some Republicans, but he picked up so many more Americans. So, any, okay? any Republican that, that's wheezy about that, I don't want them standing with me anyway. Right. Because right. they're the ones that are going to tear the flag down. They're the ones that are going to come out and say, oh, Hillary Clinton was so amazing. That's what Nikki Haley said. Paraphrasing. She loves Hillary Clinton. She's a, she's poison, toxic. Well, and the fact that she served as UN ambassador for a short period of time, leaves, goes into the military industrial complex, gets her paycheck, and then decides to come back and says, now I want to be president. I mean, after on, she folks. promised not to. 
Right. Well, even if she did or didn't, you is that really who you're telling me she's not going to be compromised by the military industrial complex? Oh, she like, already is. She was right. broke before she went to Boeing's board. Yeah, that's what I mean. It, it's some of these guys, even if at some point she had the best of intentions, she went and she got paid. And anybody who thinks that that paycheck didn't come with strings attached, like, I would love to live in your fantasy world. And the other thing, too, and, I, and I'm going to risk this, I'm going to say this, and I don't know if I should or not, but I think it's sound. This is the United States of America. If you have somebody, if you're trying to elect somebody for president, let's make sure that they don't have a whole lot of family members in another country somewhere. You know, does she have anybody? And I, I bring this to mind because of what we've learned from the NFSC. You know, is there a way to get to her through somebody else that doesn't even live here? We really ought to pay attention to that. Our country is becoming, it's not America anymore. Right. I well, mean, if, she, then, if she's down. If, if you go that way, then you, then you have to also go into Congress and say, okay, um, if you marry into some place that has questionable family members, then maybe you shouldn't be a Congress member either. Because I, hold on, you got no, you're right, uh, Mitch McConnell, whose wife's family you're right, you're right. owned China. Hundred percent, a hundred thousand okay. percent. You're right. So, so look at the you way that be a votes. Senate Minority Leader. I mean, a Senate right. Majority Leader or a Senate Minority Leader. You should, you should be, be in the Senate. Senate. Right. Right. I agree with you. I mean, look how look how they vote. Look how McConnell how do you have votes. A, he votes against America for China all the time. Yep. How do you have a security clearance and your father-in-law is in charge of the China um, security? I mean, he's a big-time person in charge of the, um, um, the shipping ports and stuff. It's shipping, yeah, but exactly. you are in charge of the Senate. Think and, what, and what did the Chinese Communist Party do in shipping in the last 20 years? They took mm -hmm. over the majority of the ports on Earth. In, on yeah, Earth, right. They sure did. They sure did. They, you know, this is, and we got to start watching that. I mean, did you, did, does anybody think Rashida Tlaib is voting for America? I don't. Or Ilhan Omar? Look at Minneapolis. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, come on. We keep doing it. Look at Mayorkas. Wait a minute. Mayorkas comes out there yesterday and says he's so proud that there's 20 million new Americans contributing to American life. He said that? Yeah. yeah. He's that gloating. is what you call. That is what you call. That, that's what you call sticking your finger in the in the face of Republicans who try to get you impeached. Yeah, because now I mean, because for him to get up there and say that, he's like, na 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 na. And who stopped it for twenty million new Americans? You know, and who stopped the impeachment? Republicans. Republicans. Right. Yeah, I mean, it must be great to be a Democrat because you can break any law, break any norm, do whatever you want, and you don't get held accountable in Congress or, mm -hmm. you know, even in a lot of cases legally. Or, I mean, it's like the it's like the classified documents. It comes out that like everybody in Washington has violated classified documents, and mm -hmm. everybody that's in the establishment, like, uh, you're okay, ah, uh, you're okay, <laughs> and then they're going after. So, so the crime isn't that you didn't you had unsecured classified documents. The crime is that you didn't give them back as quickly as they wanted. It's, it's a joke. Here's the thing. The Democrats right now, if it were two parties, the Democrats right now should be taking major losses, huge yep. losses. I think they may be. But well, the reason why they aren't in, in major, like what I'm talking about is Repub is Republicans won't let them. Right. You see it? Yeah, you see yeah. where I'm going with that? Uh huh. They won't let them take major losses. They, I mean, they were talking about getting rid of the police. They were talking about crack. Um. Uh. And 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 they really don't want the kids of America to take personal personal responsibility for their actions. That's why all these kids are going into the stores with trash cans and stuff, knocking off merchandise, putting it in the trash can, and rolling the um um the trash cans out of the store, stolen. Um, clothes, stolen this and stolen that. And Democrats aren't getting in front of Congress calling it out because they, you know, they don't, they, they don't preach personal. Well, actually nobody preaches personal responsibility anymore, but the Democrats have never really taught personal responsibility because they work on the dependent 
type of deal. We understand it's because of where you grew up. It's because of your environment. That's right. So, but all of that, given all of these kids, all of these so-called kids, they're young adults to me. They're not kids. When you get into your 20s, you're a young adult. I I hear I hear some of people call them kids. They're not kids, they're young adults. But if you keep calling them kids, they're gonna act like kids. But I they they allow these people to do all this stuff, and the and 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 America morality goes down just like you were talking about. The morality goes down. And most Americans, logic, common sense, are looking at this like, yeah, we need to get rid of those Democrats. But then steps in the Republicans. Well, abortion. Let's, <laughs> you, you know, hey, uh, you know what I'm yeah. saying? You look at the debates. I don't know if I said that about this or not, but the debates are all about creating sound bites, man. Yes. Uh, to alienate us. That's all it is. The Republicans are actively working to lose an election. Actively. What do you think this debate is between doofus from California and doofus from Florida? That's to create sound bites. Right. And and Sean Hannity, he's the head honcho. I mean, I gotta say, say what, I'm looking say forward to watching that Thursday because there's so many. You gonna watch that? Okay. You know what? You know what? Well, do me a I'm favor when you're do me a favor when you guys are I'm watching this because I'm gonna be on the road. I'm gonna be busy. But do me a favor and pay attention to the questions. Oh, right. I want to know what the questions are. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was a good call out you had yesterday where you were were sharing that article where they were talking about the questions that the RNC wrote. Those were all horrible, like sound like creators. Yeah, sound like creators. Let's talk about, you know, Social Security changing the age, which honestly is a conversation Americans should have. But that is not a. Not but a it good shouldn't thing. be had in a campaign. It should be had at a at a table, mm. with people with pencils and paper and stuff like that. Right. And 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 remember, the way our media is now, they don't. If if I am as if y'all are at a debate, if y'all are on stage, and I'm asking you a question, and your question is going to be a soundbite, the media takes your answer. And writes it in a title as if you brought it up. Yeah. Right. You said that to Donald Trump one time. And and remember what he said? Wayne, you're the first you're person right. that yeah. said that to me and noticed it because most people don't say it like that. Because I was like, have you noticed that? Like, like when he said that um, John McCain wasn't a hero. He, he was led into that by Frank uh, once. Once, once. Yeah. But the way that the, the 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 headlines ran for about a week or so, Donald Trump said that what guy wasn't a hero. No, no, he was answering a question. It should have been Donald Trump answers question, but they didn't. They were like Donald like Trump says white supremacists nowhere, good, right? says white supremacists are fine people. See, right. a and, month. And, 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 Hell, they're and, still saying it. And there are still, still people that believe it. Exactly. Exactly. Well, he said it. He said or. Um, the one about the um, um, grab women by the um, yeah. uh, the thing, he never. He, they took it out of context in the way that he said it, and on top of that, he was telling the truth. We all knew he was telling the truth, and it was a bush. Yes, <laughs> it was a bush that brought it up. Was Mike talking up, about? He was talking was about Mike up on a, Yeah, was mic'd up on a um, uh, um, Eisenberg RV. And it's like, um, so and doors closed. They were the only ones on there, but he was mic'd up. Well, okay. yeah, take any famous person and start a conversation about groupies, and you are going to get sound clips. Sound oh, clips. Yeah, just, just listen to We're an American Band by Grand Funk. Right. Yeah. Spells it out. Yeah, these people, they did. See, you can fool some of the people some of the time. You can fool most of the people some of the, all, all most the time. Of the time. You can fool me but for about 50 years. But you can only fool us for about three or four years. That's about yeah. it. Because that I because we because we came up on it. We can't wait to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about this video that I'm getting ready to show here um on the Wayne Dupree 
bro, um, um, podcast along with Hutch Baylor Jr. and J. Rob from Minnesota. I want to play this, and then we're going to um, come back from the break. I'm going to remove us first, and then I'm going to play this video. And then- America. Everybody's laughing at America today. Why? Because when they forgot their Jesus, they became a laughable matter. You know why the Lord allowed someone like Biden, and I'm not judging, please. You know why the Lord allowed someone like Joe Biden to be the president, even though he came in a sneaky way? But the Lord allowed it. They tried everything under the sun, they failed. They forced Joe Biden in. They falsified things and they brought him in. You know why? The Lord is saying to America, you are laughing at Joe Biden and you're saying he can't even remember his name. Yes, you think you're laughing at him and you're saying he can't even remember his name. Have you forgotten that you have forgotten the name of your God? I have put Joe Biden to remind you that this is you. Joe Biden is you. You have forgotten God like Joe Biden forgot his name. That's why I'm going to give you someone like that to teach you. Don't forget me. You forget me, you become weak. Everyone will laugh at you. Come back to me and I'll make you the strongest. And I'll give you honor, dignity and glory. Attention Americans, breaking news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. Take action now. The Federal Reserve phase deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard. Your hard-earned assets are in jeopardy. But there's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Reach out to American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Visit protectfrombiden.com. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Be smart. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Visit protectfrombiden.com to get your free guide and get started. Again, that's protectfrombiden.com. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe gusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, Welcome back to your show, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wayne Dupree. Let me, let me, uh, if you weren't here for the first part, let me introduce you to the Godfather of Conservative Radio, Mr. Hudson Bailey Jr. How you doing, Wayne, and everybody, ladies and gentlemen, and Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> I ain't forget his name. That was a brutal. Hey, that was a brutal clip. Yeah, we're brutal. Let me let me also introduce the the youngster of the of the group, Mister G. L. Robinson. What's up, Jay? What's up, everybody? You know, I gotta say, you muted. Everybody, found, you mute. everybody oh, found a little more I Jesus. I can't hear you. You can't can hear, hear me. I can't. No, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, wait, it's being funny. <laughs> I was gonna say oh, I'm going on like two weeks without an audio issue. I'm feeling pretty accomplished as a podcaster. There we go. Listen, Michelle, you're right. 
remember when Hannity used to say that TikTok. He got it from um he got it from Legend. a meme. Michelle. Remember when Hannity used to say TikTok if something was big, what was gonna happen with the Democrats? He's so full of it. We well, all they kept, felt on, they kept on lying. They kept saying he kept having Lindsay. I think he probably still does have Lindsey Graham on every week. But Lindsey Graham kept coming in there and, and saying, Oh, don't worry, we're gonna subpoena everybody. TikTok. Oh, I remember yeah. I remember that. He said when he got in charge of the committee in the Senate, yep. he was gonna oh man, tick, yeah, he, he ain't doing right there. People going to jail and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, oh my god, that. go back and watch clips of him and Gaudi and all those clowns. I mean, you would have thought they were gonna open up Gitmo, which is yeah. funny because this round of election, they're already framing Trump. He's gonna lock up all of his political opponents and he's gonna do this and that. I'm like, God, I really wish that Trump existed where he could go in and just start locking up all the corrupt politicians. I guarantee yeah. he's gonna do something. Somebody's gonna has do to. something. Somebody yeah. has to do something to, to establish this country. That that priest was right on, man. Yeah, he was. He was, he was. right on. And I'll tell he you was. what, it might even be the future, what he said. I mean, it might that might work. I think that this administration, the Obama administration, not Biden, but the Obama <laughs> administration has, has alienated so many people that it might be too big to steal. It might you be. Know? I mean, I, I just, how can you like this stuff? How can you like it? <laughs> well, I think the number is 100 million. Donald Trump needs to hit 100 million votes. First, and we got to have elections. Right. Mm. And I think that would be too many to steal. I mean, just looking mm. at the math. I think really, oh, they, if you want. Well, believe me, they were coming with 110. But listen, the, you're talking about, there, there's 330 million Americans. 235, I guess. Give or take a few. For <laughs> for them to say two hundred million, if they if you go like that, uh, two hundred million voted. That's I mean that's something that we used to wish that would happen. We used to wish that all of America would vote. But if two if it if the numbers come in that two hundred million people voted, you really got to start looking at man. They did they they're doing something again. They're doing something again. You know, I mean, you're trying to tell me 200 out of 300, 330 million people voted? Really? What you got to look at is like the Soviets said. It's not who votes, it's who counts the votes. Right. And right. when you have a massive intelligence operation at the federal level that is surveilling every federal judge in the country to find that garage meeting with the little boy or whatever <laughs> other whatever other deviant thing they can hold over this guy. Cow dogs. Yeah, exactly. Think about this. Not one federal judge said anything was wrong with that election. I know. Not one. That's the end of the that. country. That's the end I of a country. I still they wouldn't think even about look it. at it. That's the thing. Right. Right. It right. was immediately They're declared the most secure election ever. Yeah. We're not going to do any investigation. I mean, just think. If we spent the same money and resources we did on Russiagate on just investigating 2020, let's just say the government said, OK, there's a huge portion of the American public that thinks this is weird. We should probably look into this just I've, so everybody. I've said out. this before. We, we have a judge problem. That's the problem right. we have right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. And well, you know, I also I also said that, too, with the I mean, I, I said um, I said uh uh like uh, when um, some of this stuff was coming down with the judges, I was like, uh, I don't know. So many judges, I don't know. Some I those... think it's all of them. I, I mean, you, I think hey, the more conservative you are, the more cameras they have out in front of your house. Judges can be got to. Yeah. And, 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 and I ain't threatening anybody. I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. Judges can be gotten to. You see it. Well, you see it on TV a lot. And, you know, I mean, that's just, that's just how it is. It and in real life, I mean. Well, what you know? How come every time you see a pedophile election? ring get broken up, or you see a, you know, an escort ring or something like that get broken up, nobody's ever prosecuted. There, there's never any customers that go to jail. You know, you know there's you a whole that? lot of pedophile. Uh, um, um, there's there's a whole lot of pedophile pedophile in um, Arizona. Did y'all see? Um, I believe it. There's a whole lot of stings going on in Arizona. And if you look on um, uh, uh, pedophile bus, 
if you go on Google and you look at the images, you see all, I mean, just rows and rows of people that got picked up for pedophilia in Arizona. I'm like, well, God damn. Why do you think that is? Because there's an unlimited amount of children coming across the border. Yeah, it's all, it's just the kids coming over. That's why, why do you think camp counselors get busted for this stuff? Because they go where the kids are. Why do you think all these freak show teachers are with the blue hair and the, and the pierced faces? Because they go where the kids are. Wake up. Well, yeah, and it's when you incentivize people to bring kids across the border, which the policies have created an incentive, it's easier to get in. and That's a big business. Yeah, so in how many hundreds of thousands of kids do you hear reported that, like, they aren't even there with their parents? And that's horrible, they, man. Yeah. That's the war in Ukraine is the same thing. We got white kids now. Yep. In the war in Ukraine. And where are they getting them from? They mm. put a sign. But I forget who we had on here. But they put a sign right on the building. Orphanage. Yep. Here come all these kids. And, oh, tomorrow there's no kids here anymore. Wow. Yeah, that it's was actually. Devilish. It's devilish. Sound of it Freedom. They had a case of that down in Haiti that they talked about. Another good one. Haiti. 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 Yeah. Especially Haiti. And guess what? Guess who's the president of Haiti? Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, right. <laughs> Remember Hillary we had Clinton that? And, and her ilk were in charge of Haiti. She ran, I mean, the Clinton Foundation ran down there, didn't it? We had to, didn't we have the president of Haiti on the show? Or the no. or the he ran for president? We had somebody from Haiti down there. Yeah, it was, I don't know what his title was, but he was up there. He was yeah, in the yeah, government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he was he talking was about meetings with Hillary. Um, and how Hillary's brother was in charge of yeah. Um, yeah. some of those mines, those diamond mines down there, too. Uh huh. Yeah. See, that's what happens when y'all miss the Wayne Dupree show and y'all turn, turn these other people. Um, <laughs> Hell of a body of work. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, and there was a day where if you talked about child trafficking in Haiti, you were a conspiracy theorist. Now it's just under. And, 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 and you know, look at what NewsGuard <laughs> punked me for, tried to. I mean, okay, Washington, D.C. isn't a hotbed of pedophilia. I guess it's a it's a straight up place. Oh, that, look, look, don't you go to hell on that one. Don't you go to hell on that one. You you tell the truth about it. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm, make, I'm sarcastic, man. I mean, it's <laughs> it's right there. Go look at him. Lindsey Graham, he doesn't get along in South Carolina. They hate him there. Yeah. He gets along in DC though, baby. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Hey, what's up? What's up with this? Um, the borders. Uh, some of these borders are closing, or it's some of these border. Uh, uh, so many border places are closing because of what's going on. Did y'all? Did y'all hear about it? Go a little Yesterday? further. Let me. Um, there's some uh, checkpoints in Arizona that are closing. I'm gonna play you. Uh, I saw they video. closed some training. Okay. Uh, you said it was. Why? Well, Basically, what that was, that was um, the Border Patrol checkpoint is also closed outside of Lukeville, where the influx is currently happening. Um, CBP says it is taking an all hands on deck posture to respond to the thousands of migrants crossing daily. So that's so that's one of the checkpoints. Have you seen any of these people in your towns? I started noticing them. Here's the thing. I don't go into Baltimore too much. And that's where they're they're dropping them. I I was I would think. I don't they really see your, them. They should be in your neighborhood them. soon. I was yeah. gonna say we've had them for years in Minnesota. We were way ahead of that trend. Yeah. I when mean I, when I see them, I see them walking. Minnesota like is Ameri- Ameri- Americans won't walk on these streets, but but Mexicans will. 
<laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> Americans, you, know, you got to have a car, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just above that. But these well, Mexicans, that, so they, they you will say that. It's so funny you say that. I was coming back from getting my hair cut, and um, I saw, I saw Latinos just walking on the street. That's that's immigrants. That's invaders. They don't have cars yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they got to do like we did back in the seventies when we used to walk places. Yeah. Yeah. Like nobody does that anymore, but we used. To. I I grew up on a sidewalk. We did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to walk from home to church, um, to go clean. I used it up. to walk right. to school and then back home for lunch, and then back to school and then back home, because the worst time was in the was in the spring, because in the spring it'd be cold as hell on the way to school, yeah. so you wear your coat right, and you go mm -hmm. to school, you put your coat in your locker, and you get ready to go home at the end of the day, and it was seventy degrees out. Screw that yeah. coat, man. You're going yeah. home. Yeah. Right. After, about, after about four or five days, you got to go to school with no coat. And, <laughs> and that Where's day when you, and that day Where's when your you coat? I left it in the school locker. <laughs> when you come home from school, you got you got two hands carrying all your coats home. <laughs> right. Either that or you're wrapping it around your waist. Yeah, a couple yeah. Times. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, man. That Arizona thing's wild, though. Flipping back to that because they've they're so overrun that they even shut down any social media reporting. Every non every person in those departments, so like their Twitter page, which used to post updates, they're not doing right mm -hmm. now because they have mm -hmm. taken every available employee that they have and they're going to the border. And it's not to secure the border; it's just a process because there's such a backlog. Okay. Mayorkas needs to stand trial. I'm sorry, not impeachment. He needs to stand trial. Gitmo. Yeah. Here, Gitmo's yeah. nice this time of I'm year. serious. Some, something oh, got to happen. Adults are going to have to take this back over, man. This is, uh, this is, yeah, that priest exactly. was right, man. That priest had it nailed spot on. He, he did. He did. He sure did. Here's, um, Here's a, a little breakdown analysis. This compared to the group that you're seeing here as a steady stream of migrants continue to head to Eagle Pass. This train was seen leaving Central Mexico yesterday and is expected to arrive in the city across from me this week. I want to bring in Lieutenant Chris Olivares. You brought us along last night. We saw that video of the train there. Do we know when that train's expected to arrive and what happens when it does arrive to the city just across from us? Well, typically is what we see when we see these type of caravans. The method of transportation is usually trains. And once they make it to the northern part of Mexico, they'll get broken up into smaller groups and then we'll see them cross between the ports of entry. Now, we do expect the train to arrive very soon. But of course, we've been seeing a constant flow here in Eagle Pass with illegal immigrants crossing between ports of entry. And when you talk about the gotaways, you talk about the sheer number of people that are crossing, well, the, the, the taxpayer, the communities here in, in Eagle Pass are having to shoulder that burden. And it's our responsibility as a state to try to prevent some of these illegal crossings. But as long as the federal government continues to incentivize illegal immigration, we're gonna continue seeing this flow of illegal immigration between ports of entry and also these trains and caravans making their way to the border. Thank you so much. Man, you Democrats suck. That's all I can say about that. Why would you destroy your own house like that? Right. I think I need. I mean, I, I think I need to watch Fox Business a little bit more. That reminds you of the, of the lady that spits on her own floor at home, man. I mean, I know how you can fix that. You need a fire truck. You spray them <laughs> some bitches right off the top of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're kind of fine. There. You're staying She's there. Kind of fine, yeah. Okay. Hold on, wait a minute, hold on. This compared to the group that you're seeing here as a steady stream of migrants continue to head to Eagle Pass. This train was seen leaving Central Mexico yesterday and is expected to arrive in the city across from me this week. I want to bring in Lieutenant Chris Olivares. You brought us along last night. We saw that video of the train there. Do we know when that train... <laughs> He's getting that Tulsi Gabbard feeling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Woo! <laughs> make, the, make the hair on the neck of my back. It also doesn't stand. address the other sort of uh, elephant in the room, which is dealing with the undocumented uh, immigrants who are already here in the nation. And I know it's been a political football as to trying to figure out the best way to address that. But I'm going to ask you, what is the best way to address that from your perspective? The answer is quite clear and quite straightforward, and we've been waiting for it for about 30 years. And that is to fix a system that everyone agrees is fundamentally broken, and we need congressional action, both for uh, the lawful pathways uh, that really need to be more robust in statute, 
and for the 12 million people who are here in the United States who have been contributing so fundamentally to our country's well-being. They're our neighbors, our friends, our fellow congregants. Uh, they provide our, our frontline workers. Uh, we need to do something, and I, I am hopeful and remain hopeful that Congress will do it. The president, on his first day in office, mm -hmm. presented Congress with a proposal. You make me sick. So what happens when you put somebody in charge that's born in Havana, Cuba? Right. <laughs> you make he, he makes me so sick. He does. He, he does. And, and and that freaking talking point. I think everybody that says that now. <laughs> I think everybody that says that now should should face a firing squad. There are more than 12 million legal immigrants in this country. Correct. But they've been saying that for the last 30, 40 years. Like, there's no up and down. I mean, it's just stuck at 12 million for the last 30, 40. It's more, I would probably say, maybe I'm wrong. I'd probably say it's probably about maybe 80, 85 million. Oh, boy. I hope not. Million. Well, they were saying 12 million when Trump was in office, and they've said 8 million have come in under Joe Biden. So simple math they, would be 20 million. They were saying 12 million back there with Clinton. Right. You know, they were, it's just a stuck number 12 million. It's like, but, but we're seeing them at the border. We're seeing them every day. It They're can't be 12 across. million for 30 years. No, I never, heard, I never exactly. heard of Eagle, Eagle Pass before a couple years ago. Right. right. Now it's in the news every day. Dan yeah. Burkwam's down there. You can see him. He puts his camera up. They're flowing. They haven't stopped flowing trying from the beginning. Me, trying to tell me that the people in the White House or the people in the media don't see it. They see it. They see the cameras. They see the They're cameras. doing it. They're they the just agents. don't want to talk yeah, you just quit thinking of the media as a as a media. It's not a media, man. Not a media. It's not a media. It's, it's an agency. It's a federal yep. freaking Democrat agency. Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't even say Democrat. It's a ruling class agency. It's a ruling class agency. Yep. Okay. Sure. Because you know who let the first immigrants in like this? Ronald Reagan. Yeah, I know. They lied to him, but he did it anyway. Sure. They lied to him. They lied to him. They said, you know, but, who, but then again, who, who they got Who, who they made Mayorkas a United States attorney? George W. Bush. Yep. Did he? Yeah. Him and Clinton. It's all one big party, boy. It is. We aren't yeah. part of it. No, you want to hear about the Clintons and the Bushes? Listen to Judge Joe Brown. Because he knows all about it. Well, he's a well-versed in that relationship. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, right. Um. No, she didn't. Um, Corinne Jean Pierre says Americans overwhelmingly disapprove of the Biden economy because of the Trump administration. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all his <laughs> fault. It's Trump's fault that everything's really expensive and people don't like it being really expensive. And, and what about the, the, the Christian right raising the gas prices like that? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she's. She, you know what? I think I think she was tipsy when she said that. I think, uh, yeah, Robert I think Rush. that. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, you found the there? White House cocaine person. I watch I know, the right? news. I watch the news. I know what's going on. You know, um, Biden. Biden was talking about food and stuff like that. Let me, let me. Um, chicken dishes are up thirty two percent since um, twenty twenty. Burgers. 23 percent pasta and noodles 14 percent messing with the wrong 17%. stuff i know I'll, I'll tell you my wife went to the store uh I, I told you we had thanksgiving dinner on thursday and then we had sunday dinner with the family on sunday right. so i didn't get any pumpkin pie on thanksgiving i asked her to pick up a pumpkin pie when she was yeah. going for the bread for dinner 17 she came back she came back with some cookies i was like <laughs> what happened to the pie what happened to my pie <laughs> She said, man, it was $19.99. I wouldn't buy yep. that pie. Wow. Wow. I know, man. Yeah. I, was like, I like agreed with her. Oh, no, no, you're, no problem. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Exactly. I don't want to uh, buy this at $5 a slice. 
<laughs> Since Biden took office, and this and this is, as I said before, Democrats should be taking heavy losses going into the election. Look at this: overall prices set up seventeen point six seventeen point six percent. Food prices up twenty percent. We all see that. Rent. If you're renting, you should notice that your rent is up 18%. And actually, last year, at well, at, at, after the pandemic, I think it was last year, they were kicking people out because um, a whole lot of these people weren't allowed to kick you out during the pandemic. Oh, they caught up with you later. They caught up with you if you didn't pay them. And electricity is up 247 and it's getting ready to get cold. Again. I'll tell you what else is up. Insurance is up. Oh, my sure God. Is. Crazy. I'll tell you and what they did in my st- Oh credit yeah, card reach. yeah. I'll tell you what people buy food they, on credit card. They right. they got the the car registration is like forty bucks a year. Last year they raised pickup truck registration to two hundred dollars a year. Man, I got to pay two hundred dollars to register my vehicle. My wife pays forty. Damn. That's discrimination. Damn. Well, I I tell you this. And and I know that y'all have seen it in the stores, but what used to buy a hundred dollars worth of food will probably only buy maybe twenty five dollars worth of food now. I went to the store myself yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I do. But check this out. I, all I was getting, all I wanted to get, was the special stuff you have for Christmas, like the green and red M and M's, uh, and you know the Hershey Kisses. And the chocolate covered cherries and some cooked stuff like that. And I threw in a pack of sausage, right? $78. Three plastic garbage bags or uh, grocery bags, maybe four. But there was hardly anything there. And it was 78 bucks. And I was like being discretionary, man. You know what I mean? I look, hey, I don't know why I ain't getting that. You know, it's sad. It's it, and, and the saddest part about it is that people are oblivious. Yes. Somebody out there believes it was Trump back in 2020 that's causing their prices to be high today. Exactly so, right. There's somebody out there that thinks that. And there's people out there. I, I watched Bridget Gabriel uh, tweeted something that she was out somewhere and getting a coffee and a smoothie, and she overheard two liberal Gen Z college students, females, telling each other, I hate this country. I, can, I just want to go to Greece and I want to, I want to work on a boat. I've seen that a lot. How sad is that, man? Yeah. That they're so stupid. These are the educated class. They're so yeah. stupid that they don't understand what America is and how blessed they are. Mm-hmm. Don't have a clue. Yeah. Why don't you go? I, you know what? Go to a Muslim country. Do that. Yep. Enjoy, enjoy yourself. I see that a lot too. I, I see them basically say that they hate this country. That's sad. And and it's it's on TikTok, it's on Instagram, it's on uh, Twitter, it's on Facebook, it's on. I mean, these younger kids. Uh, first off, they don't have, they don't know how to fix anything. They aren't in the habit of fixing anything because they think things are going to just come to them. So That's exactly they, right. You know, they don't know how to work out issues. There's no critical thinking to fix anything. I I said this. When I was looking at the um, the on the pro Hamas uh, uh, on protesters, but then you got to look at the kids and where they're going to be in the next 10, 15 years too. This country's in trouble if these kids that don't know how to do it can't change a tire. God, you know what? Somebody <laughs> there was a video is- I came across by accident. I, I guess on YouTube, kid was trying. To, this is how you pump gas. I said, what the hell? This is how you pump gas. Y'all are really doing a, a video on how think, to pump gas. Think about the long term. Think why, why do you think? Because these kids were criminally taught this. They were taught this, but we ought to almost, it's almost time to outlaw colleges, to take all the colleges and bulldoze them yeah. and start yeah. over. Because yeah. I'll tell you, these kids, why do you think they can't do anything? So these 12 million immigrants can do it. Because they know how to change a tire. I guarantee it. Well, and Wayne said a really smart thing earlier when he talked about the root cause. It's we've just lost personal accountability at every part of American society. 
you're not responsible for learning your own stuff. You're not responsible for your decisions. You're not responsible to, to be held for that. And if, if you think every liberal policy comes down to you're not responsible for your choices. Or institutional responsibility. Right. Nobody's been sent to prison out of Congress. Right. Why right. not? They just stole an election. Yeah, exactly. You send all the citizens to the gulag, but none of these morons go. Yep. That's why I said the federal court, the federal D.C., that court shut down all operations and start them up in about a week or two. Anybody in Congress? All of all members of Congress should pass through there before even going home for the weekend. Just just dock it's up. Um, uh, New York congressman, come on in here. You uh, these are your charges. How do you plead? Not guilty. No. Nah. Mm -mm. mm. Uh, guilty. guilty. You could do it so easily, too. Yeah. How much money did you have before you got to Congress? How much money do you have now? And how'd you get it? Yeah, that'll work. How much money did you have? For, well, I mean, I had really, seriously, um, I had like maybe, uh, maybe a hundred and ten dollars in my account. And how much do you have now? Uh, 3.4 million. Lock them up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you know, you can do uh, along the same side, you can also do this uh, attention federal employees in every agency. If your social security number ends in an odd number, you're fired. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, I got do another one. Ask go, do not collect $200. Bye. <laughs> I got another one. Hey, um, hey, Jay, did you just get an email that your account was locked? Did you it'd be like what, what? I just check check your email. They just locked all of our bank accounts. Oops. There's an audit going on. They just locked all of our bank accounts. We won't have access to our bank accounts for a, for a couple of months. What are we gonna do? Yeah. Yeah. That's what needs to happen. Where's the Something last time you ever heard of an audit for um Congress members? Well, DOD did the last six and can't pass them. Yeah, I was gonna say DOD, the Pentagon, all those. I don't those know where their money is. Didn't uh, the Pentagon have like two trillion missing? And and nobody knows how they much. They always have something missing. They it's right. designed so nobody knows. Right. Yeah. Every age, every department has their own budget. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Every section within the commands have their own budget. Nobody can tell you how much. Yeah. I mean, those those tentacles go so deep. It's like. <laughs> It, it's almost like um, it's almost like what happens to crypto, uh, or uh, you know, it, it it just gets so deep logged Sorry, into the. <laughs> there's, a, there's a human cost to everything, right? Yeah, I, mean, I mean, things get so why bail things early. get so lost, and then a scandal on top of that. So, and you remember, well, I think I read that. It was false, but remember there was money lost before 9-11 happened. Oh, that wasn't false. Yeah, but they're putting it out there in these uh uh, uh these people fat fat There's a press conference thing the day before. I know I remember that. I remember, I remember right. that was was that when when did Cheney? when did McCain suspend his campaign? Remember that? Because that was, was during Obama, or was it during Bush? No, that was during Obama. This I remember there was something because the guy that was the Treasury Secretary was from here, Paulson, and I remember him saying that there was this oh, money yeah. that was just getting take, going out the door. Man, it was like billions and billions going, and they shut stuff down. Remember, they said we had to kill the economy to save the economy. Yep. It was something I like think, that. I vaguely I remember. think that was um, Obama McCain one. No, well, Obama McCain, because the second one was, was uh, Obama and, and Romney. And Romney didn't shut his down. Mm -hmm. So so it had to have been the Obama side. before, But it was before Obama versus McCain general election. Yeah, because Mitch, Bush was still president. Because Bush was still president, right? Yeah. And then um, Obama and McCain were running, but they had to shut it down.
because of the Paulson thing. Yeah. And then when Obama got in the office, then everything blew up. Right, um, February. You <laughs> you remember you remember um, the Democrats were coming out saying uh, eight hundred thousand people just lost their jobs. There's this in um, uh, um, November. In December, one um, one million uh, people have lost their jobs. In in January, two million people have lost their jobs. And it's like, wait a minute. If you looked at the numbers before Obama got elected, every time he was ahead, and we have talked about those polls, but every time he was ahead, the stock market went down. It's every time McCain it. was ahead, the stock market went up. But when Obama took office, everything just went down. The, the stock market went down. It, it was down 700, eight, 700 points. And it was down 800 points. And, I used to think that was a good thing, too. And now when you look back at it now, it's like the stock market went up with McCain because they knew he'd start a war. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Exactly. Wars are I, never thought of, I never thought of stuff like that. I knew guys I mean, like Jason that had been talking about this for years. And I used to laugh at them. <laughs> yeah. I did. Yeah. Honestly, oh, yeah. I did. I used yeah. to believe in this system. That's I how did. I got into this. Yeah. Like, like and you know what said, we used to hobnob with these people. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes I have to close my mouth on social media. I, believe me, I have to. I have to close my mouth on social media because I would come out negative because of how I look at how things are. I I've seen all this stuff before. It keeps happening year after year after year. It doesn't change. Generation after generation. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, and, and, the, like, and the new ones come out. The new ones like Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro come out, and they think they invented the shit. Right. No, they really know it so well that it that it it's a it's a running. Game. They know it's a full game, but they talk like they had. I mean, and they don't even talk about solutions. They just talk about. This was going on like it's the first time that it just happened. It's been happening, y'all. Like the world it's started with the internet. Like, well, and it's right. It's funny too because you know it's it's kind of like we're living in that period where people thought pro wrestling was real, and you're the guy who's like, "Nah, wrestling's not real," and they look at you like you're crazy. Like, what do you I, mean? I had a, I had a great experience of that. It was way back, right when people started talking about DeSantis. Yep. So it's a long time ago, right? And I'm sitting out there, mm -hmm. and my neighbor and his grown son are sitting there, and we're bullshitting. And the, and the kid's like, man, what do you think about Ron DeSantis? And I was like, he's a fraud, man. He's a plant. And they looked at me like, what's wrong with this guy? I feel highly vindicated. <sighs> but they thought I was nuts. Right. People are easy, man. I got to say, Ron DeSantis was such a letdown. He was. Like, like if you look at his history, if you held him in high regard, I I never did. But uh, you know, I never really knew who he was. I never paid attention to him until the governor's race. Copycat. See, I thought there was a chance. Like all these politicians, they get in there, and then it's like you you pick the good path or the bad path, and or you get forced on it, or you get forced on it. And it's once they start taking that money, it's like oh crap, they're done. Or once you they know. took those pictures. Right. You know, <laughs> seriously, I mean, that's the game. That's that the, game. the game. It's not very complicated. It's it's house of cards all day. Right. Yeah. yeah. House of cards. And, and entertainment always shows you what's happening. Right. West Wing. Yeah. West Wing, House of Cards. All, all those political shows, man. And 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 what makes the West Wing a little bit more real, and probably and probably even house of cards. Is that they have former members of the government on the payroll write help write it's, descriptions, just like the mob shows, just like yeah, the Godfather exactly. and all that. Well, and all that right? is is normalizing what the programming they want to give you. I mean, I've talked about yeah. the show Madam Secretary about the the female secretary of state that runs for president. They were just normalizing all that stuff years before. And it's yep. fun to go back and watch it now that reality has happened. And then you look at the date when that show was made. It's like, oh yeah, they were just they were just prepping everybody. And you look for... at what you look at what they did. The government crushed the mob and took over. Right. That's exactly what happened. 
Well, and even yep. look at entertainment. What was the biggest genre the four or five years leading up to 2020? It was zombie stuff, Walking Dead, all those sorts of post-apocalyptic, virus kills everybody. I mean, they started with Outbreak like 20 years ago, that movie, so that everybody's brains queued up to it. So when it hits, it's like, oh, I've seen this before. You know? Exactly. Why do you, think- Why do you think everybody keeps comparing Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's and not that's by right. accident. That's not by accident. It's not organic exactly. either. Exactly. You know what? I want to go back to that um, just for a brief second because I was, I was looking at something just a few minutes ago. We said the, that the Koch brothers endorsed Nikki Haley, right? Koch organization, yeah. Okay. Um, but Santa, you need, Santa, you need to drop out, boy. <laughs> I was just thinking about, I mean, <laughs> with with all the major big donors that already dropped out from DeSantis already, the Koch brothers going toward Nikki, he's done. You got to learn to code, Ron. No, Ron's Ron's <laughs> got to stick in for a while because Ron's doing what he's supposed to do. Ron was never supposed to win. He was supposed to do better than he did, though. Yeah, no, I mean, damage look Trump. how many look how many Judas conservatives he created. Yeah, look at all the people that that ruined their whole lifestyle. They might be riding on the hog right now, but let me tell you, baby, that's not going to last. No, they're just going to go to Nikki Haley. She's not going to last either. I'm just saying, Ron's you accomplished. Have to go longer though, I mean, Ron's accomplished what he was set out to accomplish, him. and he still got some track on it. His job was to damage Donald Trump. That was his only job. Did he do it? No. Donald Trump has the highest numbers he's ever had. Yeah. Yeah. He no. That's what I'm saying. It's a losing deal. Yeah. He he didn't put a dent. That's that's so crazy though. He didn't even put a dent in it. Every Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley that shows up, I'm tripling down on Trump. Yeah. I mean, now now the only people that really have put dents in Donald Trump, well, not. No, the only people that really had put dents in anybody would be um, Haley and Viv- Vivek were there for a while. And RFK. They, they put dents in to DeSantis. That's they didn't do it. Nick, Trump. Where, where'd that freaking article go? You know, because Nikki DeSantis Haley. is the only one that really, I mean, and, and, and then he pandered to the Iowa governor. Saying, you know, I'll probably make her vice president. Neocon, Neocon yeah, Nikki, Neocon Nikki Super PAC spends three point five million dollars attacking DeSantis, zero on Trump. Yeah, house card. Well, here's what I'm saying though. Ron house DeSantis card. took the path of attacking Trump. Nikki Haley hasn't. She's peeled off some. Re- he's peeled off some Republicans. No, no, no. She Not has many. a little bit, right? But I mean, I understand what you're talking about. But she has. Indirectly, she might not have called his name, but she has attacked Trump though, and and Trump attacked her back. But I'm sorry, but go ahead, go ahead. I, I'm just saying, and and I might be wrong, but as I look at their strategy of the establishment, they send Ron in like a kamikaze to blast to 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 identify all the never Trumpers, which all the never Trumpers have been identified. Lincoln Project 2.0, we figured out all those folks. Now those folks, when Ron drops out, will need a soft landing spot. So it'll be Nikki or Youngkin or whoever else they want to prop up. And that candidate doesn't have to take the negative Trump approach to get all those people following him because all those people are now, I'm not going to vote for Trump. So if, let's say, Ron DeSantis has 10% support, let's just use that as a number. Mm -hmm. That 10% is basically or never Trump. So when Ron drops out, that 10% moves to the next candidate. So if Nikki's at 10, that puts her at 20. I was thinking about something like that in that regard to why DeSantis was still in there. Because it, um, this morning I was like, you know, when the Koch brothers did that thing for yep. Nikki, I was yep. like, man, the only reason why Ron, Ron is in there because he was thinking that a whole lot more were going to drop out and he was going to get their numbers. So did he, so his little 17, 18% rise higher that was the original plan and the original that, right, person, exactly. the original right. headhunter for trump was chris christie yep right was also he, now up. that's the one who was supposed to do damage yeah and and, and hell he he even said I, I i'm here to take down trump trump's gonna be in prison 
And he's still here. He's still there. That's, I guess, usually, I think Christy was in there before and Christy got out, but Christy's still in there. The reason that, that Haley is in the position she's in is because the people, there's two camps. One camp of, of donors split off from DeSantis and went to Trump. And the other went, went to Haley. DeSantis lost it. He had all that backing, and he blew it. I mean, for whatever reason. I mean, he wasn't a good candidate anyway. He sucks. Yeah. He does suck. They all suck. Nikki Haley sucks worse than he does. Man. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I love, 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 there. Did you see the thing? I don't know. I'm looking on here. I don't know. <laughs> I was looking at my phone. I was, I was, I was going, going like this, you know. That, that's Go it. Go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Laura Loomer just dropped one yesterday that evidently Haley, the accusation is that she participated in a little extracurricular activity. Who knows? Yeah. She's good looking. She's good. She's but, running out of time, um, but she's good looking. But uh, oh, I don't know who do you think's the last one to drop out? I meant running out of time to be good looking. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nikki Haley would be the last one to drop out. Yeah, I think now, you're right now. Now, I mean, I think she, DeSantis, you're gonna see DeSantis go any day now, right? Yeah, I think I, mean, I could be wrong. I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen on Thursday night, he's gonna get his butt whipped. He might. He gonna get his butt whipped by the. I don't know that. Go. I don't know that much about Newsom, but Tucker Carlson. I I, I respect Tucker Carlson's opinion, and what he said he's the most ruthless politician in the country right now. And he and he's cool, calm, and collected while doing it too. He smiles when he does. It's it. like a Ken doll. He he sm but he smiles when he wants to take. He took out Sean Hannity a couple of times too. Sean yeah, Sean he, thought that he had him, but. He's like <laughs> y'all people, you know, you know, you know that told it. I was like, "What? Well, damn, he's just remember he, he's related to Nancy Pelosi. Remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah I mean, he's Gavin Newsom gangster. is he's Newsom. a gangster. He's awful, and he has the worst policies. He's ru he ruined San Francisco, and then he ruined California. Do you see, in Oakland, they have eight to nothing on the city council voted for the ceasefire and will not condemn Hamas. Right. A major one of the five major American cities. Oakland is just part of San Francisco. They're right. right. If you've ever been there, they're just a bridge in between the two. It's like Minneapolis, St. Paul. Yep. But the thing with Newsom, though, that Wayne hit on, Newsom is one of the slickest politicians we've had. And I He's mean, smooth. Ron, Ron, take out all the nonsense with DeSantis. DeSantis has zero charisma. He has negative charisma. Right. People look at him and it's like he is the most awkward. He doesn't inspire people. He doesn't really smile for real. Type yeah. Of, you know, he's, fake, fake, he's a faker. Plastic hair. Yeah, he's I mean, you, you don't watch him and feel this like, there's a man that really loves the country. Yeah. You watch the man yeah. and you're like, there's a man reading a really good speech that was wrote for him. <clears throat> Newsom, though, he comes off as very genuine and very slick and very smooth. He does. He does. I mean, I mean, you know what? We can make all the jokes up about him and everything like that, but do that to your own detriment because the man is smooth and he has a second largest economy or he has number one economy in the United States. Think, yeah, but I don't think there's anything you can point to and say it's good out of California. No, 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 no. He's just dangerous. He's just dangerous. He's for, dangerous. He is a I'm very dangerous, dangerous politician. Look what he did. You know, do you know that a lot of people don't know this? California used to be red. Right. Not so yeah. very long ago. Ronald Reagan was Ronald the governor. Ronald Reagan there. was governor. Yeah. 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 So was Wilson. Fort, Pete Wilson. Fort, look, hey, 49 to 1. Yeah. Frickin' Minnesota. Damn you, Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Rich Barris tweeted last night. He's like, Minnesota's <laughs> moving into toss up territory. And I'm like, for God's sake, let that be true, because we're still living down the 49 to 1. Hey, hey, I'll tell you, though, he's right, man. And it's not just Minnesota, and it's not just the United States. Things are changing. I'll tell you, Glenn Beck said something years ago. I used well, to be a paid paid subscriber. He said, politics is a big pendulum. Yep. I believe and it. it swung so far to the left, baby, I think it's coming back. You got a mayor in Charleston, South Carolina, Republican for the first time since the 1850s. 
you've got a mayor in uh, Miami, Republican. Yep. I mean, there's another city out there, too. I don't remember which one it was. But this is big stuff, man. You've got primary challengers for all members of the squad, including Jamal Bowman. Right. You know, I mean, so- my congresswoman hasn't even been in for a year. Yeah. And they already got a primary contender. And, and, and worse than that, the, the, the contender, the challenger, opened her office on the same day mm-hmm. and the same time as the Steelers-Cleveland Browns game, and 200 people were there. And let me mm-hmm. tell you something about Pittsburgh. That doesn't happen. Right. My Not only Pittsburgh, th- Cleveland. My only thing is I hope that these people that are running are MAGA. Because if they're not MAGA, then it's like, okay, I need to keep an eye on these people a little bit oh, longer. No, you're right. You're right. I mean, you know and the, the primary challengers are Democrats. You know what I mean? These are Democrats. See, you're never going to get a Republican right, right, right. elected. There ain't enough Republicans here. Right. You know, but that being Can we get said, a couple non crazy Democrats. I, I'm down with that. I'm, I am. I'd rather argue about policies than argue about Hamas. Right. What we really need is a strategy. And if I were in charge of the RNC, I would make sure that we have a 10 year strategy. And within that 10 years, <laughs> I would um, I would fill a couple of these uh, swing states uh, with uh, young conservatives. But I would say Free run as Democrats. Well, hold on. run run as Democrat. Get elected and then switch. <laughs> well, they, they do it to us. You know they what I'm saying? Us I, all the time. Right. Exactly. I would. I'll, t- I'll tell you what I'd like to do. We ought to put our money together, and we ought to have a parallel organization to the Romney National Committee. Why not? We ought to start our own. Yeah. I was going to say that that article that came out that was kind of the topic of the show where we were talking about they're down to 9.5 million. I think that is such a positive sign. I mean, yeah. it's a business. The RNC is a business. Look at the title of the day's taken... show. The title yeah. of today's yeah. show shows it all. Yeah, they have yeah. not taken care of their customers, and we've learned that we're not going to give them money. I mean, I have mm-hmm. made campaign donations to directly to President Trump and several to House candidates. Dinesh D'Souza's uh, son-in-law just announced he's running in a very red district. Shout out to Kathy Barnett. Kathy Barnett, you know, I mean, and Vivek, right? Vivek, I didn't donate to Vivek. I should. Oh, oh you didn't? Oh, okay, okay. No, hey, hey. you know, he uh, said I'm playing, you. I'm playing with you. He said something pretty cool. He said that he thinks Ron DeSantis didn't even want to run. Oh, he didn't. And I'll tell Vivek, you, when you listen to him talk, when you listen to him talk, it doesn't sound like he wants to be there. No, he doesn't. No, no. But as a matter of fact, you remember when I put. Uh, a video up there that showed his wife speaking, but him looking at his wife speaking like he didn't want to be there, or I mean, because she was loving the moment and he he really wasn't loving the moment. I was like, man, that's a strange facial <laughs> feature. You know, he's looking like, oh, look like they just had a fight, and you know, he he's watching her. I saw I saw one like that that showed Joe Biden's face when he pooped himself. Right. <laughs> it, had, it had like a background song, background oh, not music, but a background guy talking that sounded like the Wild Kingdom. Oh right. It was like <laughs> Bidenus Maximus stands erect, and here's the moment <laughs> where the smell eats in his nostrils, and it's like... <laughs> I tell you what, every time Joe Biden's at a public gathering, I always watch the crowd. Sorry, folks. Sorry, folks. NewsGuard, <laughs> that was just, just something, you know. I, I don't know if it happened, NewsGuard. I, I don't know. Just I, I was going to say, anytime Joe's in the crowd, watch the people behind him, yeah, and yeah. you can see the moment <laughs> where everybody's like, is that poop? <laughs> it's like that time that you showed Anthony Blinken. Right. When he called. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. that was, oh, oh, that was that, gold. That was funny, yeah. <laughs> we live, I got to say. It's like Reagan, in, you missed me. Yeah. We live in the greatest political time. Like, because even as, as, as we're falling well. apart, some of this is just so funny. 
I'm just happy. I'm just just thrilled that we have, and maybe there's a couple in there, but not a substantial amount that at least I don't think, at least we haven't gone into Ukraine yet or Russia. I mean, that scared me. I'm telling you, over the last several months, I mean, that, that's been like on the top of my head, head mm-hmm. every single day, mm-hmm. thinking about they're going to do this, man. They're going to take us in there, even with all this history. I mean, I, I tried to bring history as if much it as wasn't I could. for If it wasn't for what happened in Israel, right. it probably would have happened. And you want to know something yeah. bad about that. We're funding mm-hmm. both sides of that. Right. They, he just gave, he wants to give another $100 million to um, on the Palestinians. Just look at who's brokering the hostage deal. It's the Muslim Brotherhood. Right. Mm-hmm. Doha, Qatar. They are billionaires. Well, and I've got to say, too, as I look back at the Ukraine conflict, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, because um, I shared your concerns about, oh, it's going to escalate or, or what's going to happen. But as you look at it from kind of, you know, 30,000 feet, we like to talk about, this is going exactly how the military industrial complex wants it. Yeah. Because they are, they're into these long-term things. Mm -hmm. They're into these, just like, let's just keep spending munitions on people. If Mm -hmm. we actually invaded Russia, like then the conflict would resolve itself quickly one way or the other. And there's no money in that for the military industrial complex. That's why they have these ceasefires, these pauses. Right. These pauses are designed to keep Hamas alive and viable. Yeah. The IDF is surrounded Gaza City. They're ready to take them all out. Yep. All they got to do is say go, and it's a done deal. And the military doesn't want that to happen because they won't be able to send anything there. Right. They won't be able to launder the money. And, I mean, you need something big like this. How do you think the skim works? If you're sitting there and you're getting a, a million dollars out of this, you got a freaking – have billions and billions to be able to skim a million off the top mm-hmm. without getting caught. You can't do it. You, you know what I mean? It, it, this isn't like taking a million and giving it to McCain. No, mm-hmm. it's like taking a trillion dollars worth of taxes. And now these 10 guys get a million each. Well, and let's be honest and clip it for the future. As soon as Ukraine <laughs> resolves itself, which looks like we're probably reaching the resolution yeah, point. On that. Um, mm-hmm. They're just going to start the next one. I mean, Ukraine is, was just a fill-in for Afghanistan. All I think that the money next one already yeah. started. Yeah. I think the next one in Israel already started. See, I don't think there can be enough money they can throw at that. Oh, it doesn't have to stay in Israel. Right, that's true. It can go to. It's already in France. Lebanon. It's already in England. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. in Germany already. I mean, it's in here. Now it's here. You know, um, Elon Musk went over to Israel. And now Hamas is inviting Musk to visit Gaza. Um, so CCP, uh, what's his name? Uh, Guo, Miles Guo, feels that Elon is going to run for president of the United States. He can't. He's South African. That's what I thought, too. But I don't know. This It's just something. Fun just fact. Something. Cenk Uger, <laughs> Uger has a court case where he's arguing that naturalized right. citizens yeah. can become president. Yep. And if that, depending on the outcome of that court he's case, running. That, he's running and technically under the normal social norms, he's not able to, but he's challenging in court that he should be able to run. And if he went as a naturalized citizen, and if he wins, that would open the door to folks like Schwarzenegger or Elon or that kind of thing. Or or or, um, the, or the doctor that came on here and was calling out names of both sides Thank of the party. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, God. yeah but um, a little out there. that was a great show. If um if if Musk comes back over here, he and because you know what happens when you go visit Hamas and well you you the heartstrings and stuff. Start and then when he comes back, because he already said that he was going to fund both sides. He he's going to give money to both sides. I'm like, the money. Look, the money that you, the money that y'all are giving to uh, the Palestinians is not going to the Palestinians. It's going to buy more weapons and stuff for the Hamas government. The government is Hamas. You're not going to get money past the government. 
you're not going to do it. The money's going to, I mean, the money should be going to the government to flow through the government to get to the people. But when it goes to the mosque, it goes to the mosque, so a mosque can spend whatever they want to. Dude, you're not getting the money into Palestine, Palestinian Gaza. You, you're not getting it past Hamas. You're not doing it. Correct. But uh, look, you want to anybody who wanna murders be, civilians needs to be killed. Not, huh? Anybody who murders innocent civilians needs to be killed. Period. <laughs> you know who said that? Who's that? You know who said that? Elon Musk. Really? And me. He said that. Okay, yeah. well, 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 you look dangerous when you said it. Um, <laughs> Jay, hey, Jay, give me some laughs. <laughs> I'm serious, though. I mean, you can't be killing civilians. No, that's I know, bad. I know, I know, I know. All right, two last thoughts we talked about earlier with the priest video. Everybody needs to find God. God's going to help us get through this. Uh, second thing, <laughs> just for an interesting uh, factoid, Elon Musk tweeted about Pizzagate today, 14 million views. How about that, NewsGuard? <laughs> We're making no uh, statements about anything. Everything, everything is corrupt, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Uh, there was a, a a young lady, a young girl uh, that was Abigail was her name that was released, the only American yet to be released from Gaza. Uh, and Abigail's great aunt Liz Hirsch Naftal and her cousin Noah Naftal said in a statement Sunday, "We hoped and prayed today would come." There are no words to express our relief and gratitude that Abigail is safe and coming home. And then Benjamin Weingarten tweets, so you're telling me that the great aunt of the youngest American hostage and first American to be released by Hamas is a buyer of Hunter Biden's art, who was then appointed by Joe Biden to the U.S. Commission for the Preservation of America's Heritage Abroad. No way. Have a great day. Whoa. Wow. Let's check into wow. that, folks. Let's check into that. That sucks. Wow. Wow. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to tell it to you straight. I'm going to tell you the truth. Our darkest days are ahead of us, not behind us. And now's the time when things are shifting. We're going to have, there's going to be a new world order out there. Just clap for that, you stupid bastard. This will be the time because you really need uh, world order, financial world order. This alternative vision argues that ordinary men and women are too small-minded to govern their own affairs. That order and progress can only come when individuals surrender their rights to an all-powerful sovereign. We are here to develop the great narrative, the story for the future, that in order to shape the future, you have first to imagine the future, you have to design the future, and then you have to execute.